Hey guys, this is Jess Paul, and before you get confused on what you just clicked on, this is an extended tour of my high school sketchbook. I filmed this to use in the video, How to Be an Amazing Artist ASAP. But if I included all the footage and all of the pictures that I drew in high school, that video would have been 30 minutes long, so I decided to put it in an extra video if you cared to watch. These might not be the most significant drawings in my sketchbook, but they definitely tell a more full story. And I made some pretty funny choices. And what you're looking at right now is me trying to capture the thumbnail for that video. So after you are done watching this, you can go and watch How to Become an Amazing Artist ASAP. This is a, uh, a picture of a silhouette of driving. But one thing I tried to do which I'll recommend to not do. I was experimenting and I used olive oil in order to blend my dark... I think that was graphite. Don't do that. Um, it will bleed all over the, pa the page and all of your other pieces of art. Confessions of some angry coffee. Um, yeah, this was more perspective. When we were in school, like one of the basic things that you learn is perspective. You might remember if you were ever in an art class drawing like train tracks or seeing like telephone wires to understand how something kind of shrinks and angles into the distance. That was something I was uh, practicing here. And when I say practicing, I really did believe every single one of these pieces were just an expression of my artisticness. Like, I wasn't really drawing to always get better or, like, I mean, I did want to be a good artist one day, but it, that wasn't really something that was in my mind. It was a hobby. It was just for fun that I was doing this. I liked doing it. I liked breaking apart photos and, and objects in order to translate them onto the paper. And when I was filling this out, I had this sense of accomplishment to be filling up this uh, sketchbook. I think that what we did was we turned in this sketchbook like every couple weeks and my uh, my teacher would write notes. I don't see any notes in the sketchbook. Maybe it was on a separate sheet of paper, but he would like kind of see what we were up to and what we were doing and, and give us some criticism, which uh, criticism in art is probably the best thing that you'll ever receive, like good criticism. Um, it helps you get better. That's another side tip. No, just the bottom. The thorns on the bottom. That was another reference to Tabitha's secret. I really hope this whole segment's in focus. <laughs> another, another piece I tried with oil. So stupid. This piece is very special, even though it's completely destroyed with the oil that I was talking about. This was an experiment that one of our substitute art teachers um, had us do, where you squiggle all around and then you try to find objects within it. I think that I kind of did it wrong. He drew a dragon. I drew like a feather and a duck. I think this is also a picture of Daniel Radcliffe. I'm obsessed with Harry Potter and um, I was obsessed with Daniel Radcliffe. He was my uh, high school crush. Imagine if I met him one day. I'm sure everybody feels the same way. This was a book cover of a book I was writing when I was a teenager and never finished. I used to um, use my own drawings as posters that I would put up in school to advertise like the art club when I was the president. And I remember this being one of them, like hanging in, hanging in the stairwell of my very populated school. And I was like, that's my picture that of the poster that I made. And uh, I like this one. I always wanted to try shark soup. Never have. Um, I remember going to sushi for the first time. I was really hoping they would have shark soup. Um, I also ran the literary magazine. I did a lot. That magazine was writing and art. And so I just, I, I either literally just drew the cover. And that was like a legit school club. That wasn't like my, my elementary school art, uh, club that I just like drew stuff and, you know, asked people to copy it. There's one of the, the covers for the book. Here's a really good one on like kind of a scene, a, uh, a landscape with a lot of perspective that I was doing. I don't know if some of you guys recognize this. This is a very famous uh, poster of James Dean. Do any of these... Okay, so we are at least in 2006. So that means that this is over at least three months of drawing, at least. My space. <clears throat> Four boys on top. I don't know if you recognize this picture, but it's of a very famous British rock band. Oh, I, I think this is the first instance of color in here. 
I was using watercolor color pencils. And this how this one has a date on it. Is this the first one with a date? Yeah. Okay, this is this is September 2006. So this sketchbook does range quite a lot. At this point, I started um I started drawing Tyson Ritter from the band All American Rejects because he was my next crush. You guys are learning so much more about me than my drawings. I think this was also off of Tyson Ritter. This is a great uh, use of of background and foreground, I think. <laughs> Another picture um, modeled after Tyson Ritter. Uh, if anybody, you know, remembers Rec Radio that we just did an episode of last week, you know, rock on. This is pretty cool. I, I did a pretty good job with the billboard uh, proportions. That's a taken from a story that Johnny Depp told when he was doing kind of like the Pirates of the Caribbean, Caribbean um, press tour, which was another franchise I was absolutely in love with. Some of you may be aware of that. Johnny Depp told a story about how he vandalized his own billboard, like a billboard with his own face on it, because he didn't like guns. <laughs> this is really cool. I wish, I wonder if I still have a picture of this. Um, this was actually a diagram, like a plan for a, it was probably like two feet tall, like, um, a Wizard of Oz replica, like, version, kind of like a steampunky version of the wizard himself, uh, to, to put on stage. It actually turned out pretty good. It was made of poster board and actually had moving pieces, like a moving mouth. Um, and, and angles and, and kind of like a origami type feel to it. I wonder if I have any pictures of that. I'll try to find one. Let's see. So for the next few pages, I do go back to graphite. This is like another portrait that's in graphite. If you guys, this, this portrait was not as good as this one, but if you can recognize those characters. So this is 1006. So this is October of me being 16. This was one of my favorite artists at the time. I still really love her now, uh, Teddy Geiger. I actually interviewed Teddy Geiger back when. Here's a little bit of some unfinished work, kind of like PC work, maybe not so much unfinished, but like experimentation. Another graphite portrait. Who is this? I don't even know. Actually, that might've been me. I would, for people that were nondescript, like kind of like the back of someone's head or whatever, I would just be drawing from myself. Um, you being the model is always like wonderful. Like you, if you learn to draw, your, this is a, this is actually like one of my earlier self portraits. It says God bless my Maria. Maria was like the every the every name that I used for um for women, like in stories and stuff. In my in some of my stories, like a a nondescript every girl was like Maria to me. So, um, this was December of 06. Here's a really good example of drawing from photo. This is Kira Knightley. Um, not from Pyrus, but from a photo shoot. So I was mimicking her. You can see like the hairline's a little bit wrong. Actually, I'm looking at it in the camera lens and I can see like the, putting it backwards, I can see the proportions are a little bit off, but it was, it was a pretty good, like, attempt at a really nice detailed drawing. Okay, now we're getting into January 07. I have some color here. Here are some, this is again, this is that, from that uh, novel I was writing again. So these are two different styles. I was trying to go for one that was more realistic and then one that was more stylized. This is another way to protect your drawings is by putting a piece of, um, I, I think that's just like tracing paper over it. Okay, we're getting really to the end of it. This was just, I was obsessed with Romeo and Juliet at one time. I was practicing color. Oh, there is a little bit more. These were things just for a school project. I don't particularly like them. I really rushed through them. Oh, my fingers are getting all graphite-y. Here, book catch on the rye. Another use of charcoal that was a little bit more cartoony. 
a little bit different, a little bit more stylized. We learned about so many artists, you wanted to try other styles. This is a, another example of what I was talking about. Like, here's a photo, um, and, and we're talking about, like, stark contrast. You'll see a lot of, like, silhouetted drawings where people actually copied, like, a stark silhouette um, or a, uh, a black and white rendering of a photo to turn it like kind of like a stencil and that's what I did. I have a color version of that too. I'm literally looking at it. This is Jennifer Love Hewitt. I don't really have any notes on these. Here is one of John Lennon. Weirdly, I didn't even like really focus on his eyes. I think I was foc like what I usually do. I was like, because they're not that detailed, I was more focusing on uh, proportions, the whole object, um, and just getting all of those details right. That was for another school project, and I think this is literally one of the last things I did in, in this sketchbook, and I never finished it. I continue to draw in other sketchbooks on other pieces of just, like, um, cardstock paper. I drew on big poster boards for larger projects all the way from high school into college. Um, so, like, pieces in this end when I was 17 years old, you know, I went to college when I was 18. So from there, I was really starting to hone my skill and to get into what kind of drawings I wanted to do. But it all started here. It all started in this. Just having this is just a really good record to show people this is this is the process. This is learning. This is what learning looks like. Sometimes I'll vend my art. I'll take prints of my paintings and my drawings, like ranging all the way from this Jack Sparrow one all the way up to college. And I'll, I'll say that to people, like I'll, I'll point to different places, like on the table, I'm like, this was 16 years old, this was 20 years old. And they don't so much always range in like obvious quality, but even just like um, style maturity. One of the reasons why I wanted to make this video is because so often when I am vending at those places or meeting people who are looking at my art, they say, man, I could never draw like that. Or man, I wish I could draw like that. And I wish I always, you know, have this to show them to say, uh, you definitely can if you really wanted to. Like, you can't just snap your fingers one day and wake up and be a good artist. That's not how the world works with anything but you definitely can become a great artist over time. There are some hacks, like with the tips that I showed you, you can kind of bypass some of the struggles that you're going through, the obstacles that you're facing. And again, even if you are a talent, an innate talented artist or not, you can get better at what you do. And this is my favorite painting I've ever done. No, this is. No, this is. And this is Jess Paul. <laughs> Last week we spun on art and Etsy, and this is a category that I wanted to both talk about being an artist and how to sell your art.